Hello and welcome back to another Tasty Tutorial. Yesterday I'm showing you how to create this balloon simulation with a cloth simulation. Please bear in mind that today we're just taking a look at the simulation. If you want to have any other tutorials on texturing and lighting, I'll be pending those a bit later on and also making some more in the future. As always, there's going to be a free resource file in the description below on my Gumroad that you can download and check out for yourself. Let's get into the video. So I've opened up Blender 3.3 regrettably i don't have the screencast keys but i'll be telling you the shortcuts that i'm using there's not going to be so many we're just going to be working with different simulations almost no modeling so it's going to be super quick super fast so i'm going to press numpad one to go into my front view and i'll choose the camera and light by shift clicking on them right clicking left clicking depending on your shortcut scheme then pressing x and deleting so now we're going to make the balloon i'll just use a very simple cube press control one so I can have the subdivision of one set on my cube and hovering over the subdivision, I'll just press control A to apply it. Now I'll take another modifiers, another subdivision. Yeah, I can also press control one. It really doesn't matter. I'll press tab to go into edit mode and you'll find this vertex down here. Press shift control B and then just slightly open our little vertex down here. Maybe we can open it a bit more. So press S shift Z, which is going to just eliminate the Z axis and it's going to scale it on the Y and X and then just make it slightly bigger. Kind of like that. I'm just going to go again into my front view by pressing one on numpad and then press E and extrude it down by a fair bit. Let's say three, three. Yeah, you have this little weird thing going on with the balloon. We just want a nice and defined balloon at the top. I'm just going to turn on the viewport, the real time display modifier for the subdivision and press R for a loop and then position the loop relatively close to the loop at the balloon and then press control R again and put another loop in between those two, sort of like this. So now if I open up again my subdivision, you can see that the balloon is a bit more defined. Go into edit mode, press control R again, and then pull this bad boy down again. So we have a nice defined string at the bottom. Now, before I do anything else, I'll just press Z and then I'm going to press C, which is going to open my brush right here and then left click the bottom vertices. So I have all of these eight down below selected. I'm going to go into my green triangle here, vertex group, press plus and then rename the group to pin and then assign these vertices to this group. Now you're going to see why we did this because now it's time to go into our cloth simulation. So the cloth simulation, you'll find it in the physics properties and just press on the cloth and this is going to add the cloth simulation. Easy enough. So it's time to check out our simulation. Now, if I press well, you can see that this balloon is not really acting as a balloon. It's actually falling down. So what do we need to do in order for our balloon to stay afloat? First of all, we're going to go down to shape and we're going to pin the group, meaning we're going to choose these vertices. And these vertices are the ones that are going to stay in place. But still, but the balloon is falling over. So what do we need to do? Well, in pressure, which is the tab above it, you can set the pressure to one, which is not going to change things a lot, but there's another setting here called fluid density. Now this guy, if we start pulling it into the minus, you will notice that it's starting to remain afloat. And the more we pull it, the more it's going to float up. Now, another thing I want to do to just add a bit of more of that balloony vibe to our little balloon right here is the shrinking factor, which is again in your shape tab. So for that, we're just going to let it down to, let's say, minus 3.6 or something. And boom, this is the simplest way you can create this. You can also mess around with it by just adding a force field. So shift A force field. Let's add a turbulence. And if I play the animation and add some strength, you will see that slowly it starts to mess around with our little balloon right here. Now, for this animation and for this idea to work, I also want to demonstrate how to do multiple balloons. Multiple balloons, basically, we're not going to duplicate the object, but rather we're going to go into tab, edit mode, then press A twice, and we're going to shift the duplicate our balloon. So let's say let's put three of them like this. So now if I start the simulation, 
you can see all three of them are working beneath the same cloth simulation. However, they're not colliding. So how do we set this up? So in our cloth tab, we're gonna go under the collisions tab and you'll see a bunch of settings here like quality, object collisions, self collisions, and we're gonna go through all of them right now. So object collisions means the collisions between our cloth object, which is our balloon. And let's say we would have like a ceiling, for example. But the collisions we need are the collisions between the balloons. So what do we need to do? Just tick self collisions. And this is gonna make the balloons collide between themselves. If the collisions are not stable, you can also detract the distance, make the distance like 0.004. And if you still have issues, you can increase the quality of the collisions and increase the quality of the cloth. Whenever you increase the quality of the collisions, do it by increments of one. So let's say three, four, and find the sweet spot where your balloons are gonna work. Now for the last test, let's try adding something with a object collision. Okay, so I'm gonna go back into my front view like this. I'm gonna add a mesh, a UV sphere, scale it up, control A, apply the scale. And I do this because usually it can produce some issues during the simulation. And I'm just gonna press B for box select and just select the bottom let's say half, sort of a half of the sphere. Press X to delete the vertices. We have them like that. Shift Control, Alt C, Origin to Geometry. You can also do that by going under Object, Set Origin, Origin to Geometry. So now it's time to see how our balloons are gonna get caught up in this half sphere. So first of all, I'm gonna set a collision to the sphere, which is in, again, our physics properties. And for our balloons, I'm just gonna go down to my Shape tab and just delete the pin. Now, if I press play, you're gonna notice, yeah, the balloons are not really cooperating. You can also press play and then play with some settings because you'll see that below you have this blue line and this is usually the cache of the simulation and maybe sometimes the cache is not updating, which means it's going to repeat the same results you were given prior to this. Now, what can we do here? Well, for one, usually I found out that this, the single-sided setting in the collision object of the soft body and cloth, if I turn that off, usually it works. For some reason, I don't even, I, I mean, I don't understand it. Cloth collisions acts with respect to the collider normals, improves penetration recovery. I have no clue why this is by default set up. Maybe it's just for the closed objects. I, I have no clue. but. In any case, it seems to work because if we go into our wireframe and check out how our balloons are interacting, you can see that they are nice and snug. Maybe a bit too snug. And this is what I was telling you about earlier. So you can see that they are protruding between each other. Now, how do we solve this? Like I said, let's increase the quality steps of the cloth. You can see a bit more instability. And let's say, let's increase the quality of the collisions to something like super large, maybe 10. And now you can see that our little guys are actually working together. So yeah, that's basically it. Now you can do maybe um, a floating simulation, these little guys just floating around the room. If you wanna do something like that, I would suggest maybe playing around with this fluid density setting. So for example, what you can do, you can turn down the setting to a level at which our little guys are gonna basically rise up or stay in the same place. So let's try something like this. So now they are rising up. Maybe we can lower it down, lower it up. Find the sweet spot because if you can get them to levitate, kind of levitate, then you can use all types of tricks. You can put the turbulence, you can really I crank up the turbulence, maybe put a force field, like a vortex and make them like turn around, increase the strength of the vortex. We can just delete the collision at this point. And you can see them just going about each other. So basically, yeah, super simple, super easy. You can now texture them however you like, put them in whatever environment you want. And the best part is, because you're working with very few vertices, this is actually gonna work on, let's say, 
slower and weaker machines. So yeah, that's going to be it for this tutorial. Hopefully you've learned something new. Hopefully you've learned something useful. If you have any questions, uh, let me know down in the comments. I always read those. I always try to answer questions as, as soon as I get the notifications. Make sure to subscribe and like the video. It helps me out a whole lot. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one.